Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to walk you through an example of accrual accounting versus cash basis accounting. Let's take a look. First up, we're going to talk about the revenue side of things, recognizing revenue under the two different accounting systems. Here I have an example where I tell you Tiger Dry Cleaners incurs the cost to clean customers' clothes on June 28th. The customers claim and pay for the clothes on July 3rd. And in the middle of those, Tiger's second quarter ends on June 30th. So I ask you a few questions. First, what are the components of the transaction? In other words, what's the economic activity that's going on here that we're capturing? Second, in which quarter should Tiger report that economic activity? And of course, we're looking for revenue, so you know that's kind of the economic activity you're trying to keep an eye out for. But which quarter should they report that, that, that economic activity, that revenue? Should it be in Q2, which ended in the middle of this problem, or should it be in Q3? And so I tell you here, um, I want to know the answer under both accrual accounting and under cash accounting. And I give you a hint that says draw a timeline. And so that's where I'm going to kick this off. I'm going to draw a timeline that contains our activity and our key dates. And there's only three dates in this one. Those dates are June 28th, July 3rd. Sorry, July 3rd moves over. And June 30th which comes between them. All right, there's our three key dates. Now, I'll talk about June 30th first. June 30th, there's no real economic activity going on that day. It's just telling you second quarter is ending that day, which means the period over here to the left of that is Q2. The period to the right is Q3, quarter two, quarter three. Now, if we focus on the economic activity, on June 28th, the company cleaned customers' clothes. In other words, performed the service. On July 3rd, the customers collected their clothes and paid, in other words, paid for services, or I, we should say, I guess since this is from the company's perspective, collected cash for services. So there's our economic activity, there's our key dates, there's our timeline. So now the question is, Q2, Q3, where do you recognize revenue? Let's start with accrual accounting. Under accrual accounting, it does not matter when cash changes hands. It's irrelevant. We have to record when cash changes hands, but that has nothing to do with revenue or expense. Under accrual accounting, and specifically the revenue recognition principle, we say we get to record revenue when that revenue is earned by the company. When do you earn that money? When you perform the service. So on June 28th, when you perform the service, you have therefore earned revenue, and therefore you will then record and report that revenue in Q2. Again, this is under accrual accounting. Now, cash basis accounting is very different. Cash basis accounting, it doesn't matter when you're performing the service or fulfilling the obligation or earning the revenue. Under cash basis accounting, cash is the only thing that matters. So, under cash basis accounting, the day you collect the cash, you are, in essence, collecting your revenue and therefore under cash basis accounting, you would report your revenue in Q3, not Q2. So there's the difference, okay? Let's check this out even further. We're going to use the same example, but now we're going to look at the expenses rather than the revenue. So here we go. It's still Tiger Dry Cleaners. They still have that Q2 end on June 30th. Only now we're going to focus on what are they spending to clean these clothes? And we're just going to focus on two things. One is the employees. The employees are working June 16th to June 30th, okay? Back half of June. However, they don't get paid until July 5th. Very common, right? You don't necessarily get your paycheck on the day you make the money. You usually get your paycheck a week or two later. There's a delay. Tiger's electricity bill for June, so once again, using electricity in June, arrives in July and doesn't get paid until August. And then, of course, we have the Q end on June 30th. So 
Same three questions. What's the components of the transaction? In other words, what are the economic activities and specifically with regards to expense? And then when do we record those? Do we record them in Q2 or Q3? And once again, I'm going to start off with a timeline. So here's our timeline. Our timeline actually starts on June 1 because our earliest date, even though it doesn't say it, is June 1 because of this electricity bill. Electricity bill for the month of June. So starts June 1. We're going to go all the way to June 30 because that's when the quarter ends. So we have Q2 over here, Q3 over here. We are then going to proceed. Remember, June 30 is the last day of June, so July starts that day. We're going to proceed all the way to then August. So I'll call this August 1. And the main reason we need August in there as well is because we say that we do not pay the electricity bill until August. So we need August on our timeline. And of course, I'm going to just leave this open-ended because we don't have specific dates. We don't ever hit September. So I'm just going to leave that, that end of the timeline open. So here's our general layout. We have June, we have July, and we have part of August. Q2, Q3. Both July and August are part of Q3, a quarter last three months. So um, those are both Q3. All right, let's fill in our dates. So we know that the employees worked from June 16th to June 30th. So I'm going to go ahead and add June 16th here in the middle. And I'm going to put a bracket here that shows employees worked. We also know that the employees got paid on July 5th. So I'm going to add in July 5th right here. Employees paid. The other piece of this is the electricity, right? We know that the electricity for the month of June, so put a bracket here for all of June, electricity used. I'm going to move my Q2s and Q3s down just to give us a little breathing room. We know that the bill for the electricity arrived sometime in July. We did not put a date on it. So again, I'm going to bracket July off. E-bill arrived, electricity bill arrived. And then we know we paid for the electricity sometime in August. So I'm just going to put this kind of open-ended bracket over here. We don't know when in August, but sometime in August, E-bill paid. So there's our entire timeline. This one's a little bit more complicated than the one on the prior slide because we have two events going on that cover ranges of dates rather than just point in times. So it, it, it becomes a little bit more messy, but all the information's there. It's all visual. We can see it. Let's do our two bases of accounting. So first up, accrual. Again, just like revenue, the expense recognition principle under accrual accounting says you recognize expenses when the cost is incurred not when the cash is paid. When the cash is paid is irrelevant. The question is, when did you become obligated to pay it? When did you incur the cost? Well, you incur the cost when the employees work and when the electricity is used. So under accrual accounting, accrual accounting, cost was incurred in Q2. Therefore, expense is recorded in Q2. Okay, One of those would be salaries and wage expense. That's your employees. The others would be what we generally lump into utilities expense. Electricity is just one of your utilities. On the other hand, under cash basis accounting, remember, the cash is the only thing that does matter under cash basis accounting. So under cash basis accounting, we have the uh, cash cost, I'll call it, incurred, right? Or cash outflow, I guess is what I should say, outflow. For both the employees on July 5th and then the electricity bill sometime in August. Remember, both July and August are fully in Q2. So the cash, in, is, it, the cash cost or the cash outflow incurs at those times. So then under cash basis accounting, This is when the expense is recorded in Q3, specifically July and then August. It gets split between the two months. All right. 
Now let's look at it in full summary and see what the main difference is from, say, an investor standpoint and why we might prefer one method over the other. So here we go. The only thing different in this slide is that I'm adding dollar values for you. So I tell you that the um, customers paid $2,000 for their dry cleaning. I tell you that the electricity was $350 and that the employee cost was $1,000. And I'm doing that just so that we can then create these nice little grids and see the difference between cash accounting and accrual accounting. So let's start with cash. If you recall from our prior two slides, under the cash method, we recorded nothing in June. We didn't, we didn't do anything in Q1. We recorded the 2,000 payment from customers when they paid us in July. We recorded the $1,000 paid to our employees when we paid them in July. And we recorded the 350 paid for the electricity when we paid it in August. Now, what does this do from a business perspective? Remember, all of this stemmed from activity that originally occurred in June. But from a financial statement standpoint and from an investor standpoint, June is showing no profit or loss. In fact, it almost looks like the company wasn't even in business. July is showing a $1,000 profit. Okay, that's great. August is showing a $350 loss. Boy, that sure doesn't look good. And even more importantly than this, look at how volatile this is. We go from zero profit and loss to $1,000 profit to $350 loss. All from what was in essence the exact same set of economic activity. Wash some clothes, get some money from your customers. This is undesirable from a usefulness of financial reporting purpose. The volatility does not give you an accurate assessment of what was the true economics of the business. On the other hand, accrual accounting. Notice, we recorded the revenue when we earned it in June, in Q1. We recorded both the employee cost and the electricity cost when we incurred that cost in June in Q1. For a net profit in Q1, or June in this case, of $650. And then we show no activity for July, no activity for August. This is much more accurate of what happened. Remember, the transaction, the economics of the situation, we washed the clothes for the customers using electricity and using our employees' time, all occurred in June. And under accrual accounting, we show that in June and what the net profit of that was. In these two examples, I didn't give you any economic um, revenue or expense in July and August. I didn't tell you what the company was doing as part of its ongoing business. And so July and August are showing zero. Now, in a real business, what's going to happen is, just like in June, there's going to be new dry cleaning and new collections in July, and there's going to be new dry cleaning and new collections in August, right? But this is going to give investors a much more stable, less volatile portrayal of what does your ongoing business look like. It matches up your revenues and your expenses in the time period in which both were earned or incurred. That's the benefit of accrual accounting over cash basis accounting. So I hope you found this helpful and I hope you join me for another video.